Welcome to The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. I am your host, Cicely Davis. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Americans, patriots, and everyone in between to The Savage Truth. Cicely here, happy to have you on a Monday. If you watch or listen to a few or all 56 episodes, welcome back. And thank you for your support in joining me. For the newbies, welcome. Now we keep it lively here on The Savage Truth with Rick and Todd. Okay. Hi, Rick. How you doing? Good. All right. Todd with the elusive Todd, the wonderful Wizard of Oz in the background, never seen, but always working and keeping us on the straight and narrow. Shout out to the great Oz Todd. Thank you for your expertise. We need you. Everyone needs a good producer, someone who has the technical savvy, the tech knowledge, and, but also has a pulse on social media and its innovation. I'm grateful, truly. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Please, that helps us out a lot, truly. And it keeps us connected, and it keeps us growing together. Now, let's get into this week. Let's get into it. So, <laughs> Nick. Nikki Haley, Nikki, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley. What can we say about Nikki Haley? I know you've heard it, savages, but we need to discuss it. We need to talk about it. We need to have a savage truth spin on this Nikki Haley thing. Nikki Haley, as you've heard, has said on Wednesday that she will be voting for Donald Trump, like most of America. (laughs) <laughs> yes, she's finally getting on the bandwagon a l- lot late, a lot late. She said that she will vote for Donald Trump despite maintaining he has not been perfect on many policies. Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I've made that clear many, many times, she said. But Biden has been a catastrophe. So I will be voting for Trump. Having said that, I stand by what I said in my suspension speech. So we're going to get into this. So during an event at the Hudson Institute in Washington, her first public speaking event since exiting the presidential race in March, Haley said her priorities as a voter are supporting a president who would back America's allies and hold its enemies accountable, who would support the border support capitalism and freedom, and who would lower the national debt. When and if you go up against Donald Trump, that will be your outcome. You will be, without a doubt, suspending your candidacy, okay? Suspension is inevitable, point number one. Now, am I crazy or are these... Are these and were they always Trump policies? Okay. Supporting capitalism and freedom, securing the border, right? Holding its enemies accountable and putting America first. Those were first and always Donald Trump's priorities. Uh, Am I missing something here? (laughs) These are always Trump's policies. Where's the imperfection? Trump hasn't been perfect on these policies. Where's the imperfection? Tell me about it. A president who delivered on his policy stances stood up against the Democratic regime, up against the worst scrutiny in the history of American presidency. Where's the imperfection? Now, I'm not calling him Jesus, okay? And I'm not saying that he is a perfect human being. No, no one is. There was only one. Only one that was, hallelujah. But as a president, the man delivered and stood as a beacon of American hope, prosperity. He was a standard. He gave an American standard. He, he, he represented faith, viability, strength, success, and freedom. Can't argue with that because I won't let you. Okay, so let me get back to where I left off. You know how I get. I get upset when someone tries to throw daggers at the dawn. Okay, for good reason. Who would go through all this? Truly, all jokes aside, ask yourselves that, folks. Who would actually go through all this? Who would endure this? Who would go through this and endure all this slander, 
the lawsuits, the gag orders, the scrutiny, persecution, lies, gossip, raids and more attacks on his personal character, you know, scrutiny on his kids and and questioning his marriage and the scrutiny and the criticism on his children, his marriage, his wife, who nobody, nobody would go through this. And the last time we saw a president really put it all on the line for America was George Washington, which is why he is one of my greatest heroes. OK, we haven't seen that kind of president stand up and endure that much since then. Who? Nobody. And that is why make no qualms about this. This is exactly why I am a fan and a supporter of Donald Trump. No one else would put up with this. People, this is not what a normal person would endure. So for all of those who say, oh, you know, you make him out to be a God. You all worship him. We get this all the time. We hear this a lot. We hear this from never Trumpers, right, who are Republicans. We hear this, of course, from Democrats and crazies. No, let me be very clear. Rick, get a close up on my face while I say this, okay? Okay. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am very well aware of who my God is and who he is not. This is not about making Trump out to be a demigod. It's about appreciating his full embrace of the job at hand. Now, if you are someone who wishes to end that sentiment, then tell your prominent, prominent Democrat leaders and media outlets and attorney generals and president to stop the lawfare, which ultimately makes him out to be an empathetic martyr to which the people grow fonder of day by day. Keep it up. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep him in the lawsuits. You only grow his popularity and his appeal and his assurance to the presidency come November. Got me quoting the Bible in this episode. You know, I will preach up in here. OK, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I digress again. OK, it's easily get distracted. She says this and I quote, having said that, I stand by what I said in my suspension speech. Trump would be smart to reach out to the millions of people who voted for me and continue to support me and not assume that they're just going to be with him. And I genuinely hope he does that. Now, these are comments in her first public speech since leaving the race. And it's also a signal of the GOP's virtually complete consolidation of support behind Donald Trump. When she announced over two months ago that she was ending her president presidential bid, Haley declined to endorse Trump, saying that he must work to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond who do not support him. And Haley's announcement Wednesday of her plans to vote for him this fall hardly amounted to a full throated endorsement. This is what she said. Trump would be smart to reach out to the millions of people who voted for me and to continue to support me and not assume that they're just going to be with him, like I just said. Keep in mind that Haley shuttered her own bid for the GOP nomination two months ago, but did not immediately endorse Trump, having accused him of causing chaos and disregarding the importance of U.S. alliances abroad, as well as questioning whether Trump at age 77 was too old to be president again. OK, let me say this. That man is as lively as I am, as anyone, more than the average senior. But I would say comparable to any middle aged person. He's tireless, absolutely high energy and tireless. Remember, everyone, when I saw him last Friday for the Lincoln Reagan dinner, he had attended his son Barry's graduation earlier that day, was up early, attended his son's graduation Full, ce full celebration, and then hopped on the plane, on the jet, the private jet, oh, beautiful, successful, and flew to Minnesota and gave a 90 to 120 minute speech, taking pictures and shaking hands beforehand, and then off to rally on Saturday and Sunday, and then back in court on Monday. Okay, this man has all it takes and then some to be president of this country. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's campaign has been working to win over her supporters whom they view as true swing voters. Biden's team is quietly organizing, okay, sneaking around in the shadows, um, trying to organize Republicans for Biden group, 
a Republicans for Biden. It's an oxymoron. Are you kidding me? Which will eventually include dedicated staff and focus on the hundreds of thousands of Haley voters in each battleground states, according to people familiar with the plans, but not authorized to discuss them publicly. As I move on from this story, let me just say this, as I'm sure you all know and feel, anybody, anybody who votes for Joe Biden in this plight, she can have. She can have them. This whole Republicans for Joe Biden, she can have them because they were never Republicans to begin with. Good riddance. But you'll be sorry if you do that. You'll be sorry. You'll be back. (laughs) To be honest, folks, I don't really fall for this whole storyline that there are all these Republican holdouts out there for Haley. Um, Are there some who still are sore that she lost? Absolutely. There are never Trumpers. I understand that they exist, but the momentum is with the Don. It's with Donald Trump. When you see how this man fills arenas and stadiums and streets and the sidewalks and any other public or private venue, you'd be a fool, a fool not to get on this train. Okay, you'd be a fool not to get on. And I'm moving on. Let's take a political break. Let's come on over to cover some other events, some things, some goings ons. Okay, from denial From denial to admission, a surveillance tape holds Sean Diddy Combs accountable. So this was disturbing, okay? As a woman, um, just as a human being, okay, this tape, this, this video was disturbing. It's always disturbing to see someone being attacked, okay? This was shocking on a different level because P. Diddy said earlier that these were all vicious accusations against him And then we get this disturbing video. So if you haven't seen it, Savages, look it up. I'll catch you up on some of the background on this, as I always do, though most have seen it and have at least talked about it. But if you haven't, I'll fill you in. That's your girl will do that for you. So Sean Diddy Combs, almost 48 hours before, I'm sorry, after being shown physically assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in 2016 in a surveillance video obtained exclusively by CNN, has apologized. He said he's sorry. So last Friday, CNN published the video in which Combs is seen grabbing, he's shoving, he's dragging and kicking Cassie during an altercation. And that matches allegations in a now settled federal lawsuit filed by Cassie in November of 2023. At publication time, representatives for Combs, who, by the way, is an influential figure, figure, I don't know if you know him, but he's a very influential figure in music, in, in the music industry, who founded the music label Bad Boy in 1993, has not responded to requests for comment. Combs... He's a rapper, he's a producer, and a business mogul, was silent for nearly two days as backlash mounted, and boy did it come, including in the comment section of his old social media posts and a media storm just completely swirled about this. Then, just after 11 a.m. on Sunday, Combs released a video on Instagram in which he apologized for an incident he'd previously denied ever happening in the first place. He said it never happened. He said it was all just a bunch of money grubbing people wanting, looking for a dollar. Let me quote him. (sighs) Now this is a pathetic video, okay? So anyway, I'll quote him. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkness, darkest times in your life, but sometimes you've got to do that. I was effed up and I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I am disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. Combs did not mention Cassie's name at all in the video. Now, Cassie Ventura's attorney, Meredith Firetog, said in a statement on Sunday following the release of Sean Diddy Combs' apology, this, and I quote, Combs' most recent statement is more about himself than the many people he has hurt. When Cassie and multiple other women came forward, he denied everything and suggested that his victims were looking for a payday, that he was only compelled to apologize once he once his repeated denials were proven false 
shows his pathetic desperation and no one will be swayed by his disingenuous words. Combs previously issued a blanket denial, like I said, of the allegations um, by Cassie's lawsuit in which she claimed she was raped in 2018 and subjected to years, folks, years of repeated physical and other abuses by Puff Daddy. Now, just so you know, you probably have noticed, I've called him Diddy, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puff. He's had a lot of nicknames over the years. Again, he's been in the industry for quite some time and he's changed his name several times. So he's gone by a different name. So it's all the same person, Sean Diddy Combs, okay? Um, he's also denied through his spokesperson the allegations from the five other civil suits that were filed against him following Cassie's. And his attorney has called the claims lies and suggested the plaintiffs are motivated by financial gain and public notoriety. Now, my question is this, what notoriety do you get from being an abuse victim? Someone help me out. How does that actually help your brand? Okay. I know if I were seeking fame, I wouldn't choose a route of proclaiming to be somebody's punching bag and rape victim. But his vehement denials were amplified, giving him I'm sorry, given how prominent an entertainment figure Diddy is, who has gone by various stage names, like I said, including Puff Daddy, was once considered to be. He is influential and a big deal. He's, he's got influence and he's a big deal, okay? This guy is really heavy in the music industry, particularly hip hop, and credited with work that is regarded as instrumental in the growth of the hip hop genre. Sean Diddy Combs has won three Grammys in his career and is a notable entrepreneur under the Combs Global Banner. Okay, he is a billionaire. He's he's made he's been quite successful. Okay, in his musical pursuits, Combs added in his statement that he went and sought out professional help. And I quote: "I got into going to therapy, going to rehab. I had I had to ask God for His mercy and grace." I am so sorry, but I'm committed to being a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Now, let me catch you up on this November lawsuit because it's pertinent to this whole entire story. OK, let me give you that background. Like I said, in November of 2023, Cassie accused Combs of rape and abuse in a 35 page complaint. In that document, in which there were multiple allegations that Combs was physically violent towards Cassie and forced her to engage in various sex acts with other men during their time together. Now, there are other people all over the Internet that have said the same thing and other allegations, which actually is a little too nasty for me to even cover on this episode. I suggest you go look it up. Prepare yourself. OK, you might want some sanitation rags with you while you're listening to some of these allegations. But I digress. <laughs> there were details about an altercation that occurred around the March 2016 um, at the now closed um, the now closed Intercontinental Hotel in Century City, Los Angeles. During this incident, the complaint said this. Diddy became extremely intoxicated and punched Cassie in the face, giving her a black eye. After Diddy fell asleep, Casey attempted, I'm sorry, Cassie attempted to leave the hotel room, but he woke up and followed her into the hallway of the hotel while yelling at her. This is per the complaint. He grabbed at her, then took glass vases in the hallway and threw them at her, causing glass to crash around them as she ran to the elevator to escape. Again, this is per the complaint. Now, after Cassie got into the elevator, her complaint states that she took a cab to her apartment. Now, this part of the case is hard for me to understand, but I've heard about the psychology of those who are abused and how they're kind of caught up in the abuse, almost viewing it as normal because they've gone through it for so long. Um, they're brainwashed, those kind of things, or apologizing as if it's their fault for causing the abuse. But and I'm back to the case, upon realizing that her running away would cause Diddy to be even angrier with her and completely stuck in his vicious cycle of abuse, Cassie returned to the hotel with the intention of apologizing for running away from her abuser, per the complaint. 
When she returned, hotel security staff urged her to get back into her cab and go back to her apartment, suggesting that they had seen the security footage showing Sean Combs beating Cassie and throwing glass at her in the hotel hallway. The complaint alleges Combs paid the inner city continental Century City um, Hotel $50,000 for the hallway security footage. So CNN contacted the hotel and a representative of that hotel said on Friday this, this hotel is no longer under IHG management and we do not have any access to prior incident records or footage. Cassie Ventura, AKA Cassie, is or was, I don't know if she still has a career or not, so um, a singer who was formally signed to Combs' label claimed in her suit that he exerted his power and influence over her throughout the course of their professional and romantic relationship. And according to her complaint, she was 19 when they met and Combs was 37 and their business relationship lasted until 2019. That's some red flags right there. What does a 37-year-old want to do with a 19-year-old? Okay. Uh, it's just really sad, you guys. Um, um, but they met when she was 19, he was 37, and their business relationship lasted until 2019. Their off and on again relationship lasted from 2007 to 2018. So this is a really long time of abuse, allegedly. Now, people are not going for his apology, okay? He's getting dragged on social media. People are kind of turning away from him. They're disassociating with him. His house of cards has been falling in for quite some time, and this video has not won him any favor or benefit of the doubt. But I have to tell you quickly about his denials, because it's the backdrop for his continued fall in favor with the public and with his fans and those who have been disassociating with him. So he has an attorney. His attorney's name is Ben Braffman. One of Diddy's attorneys said in a statement to CNN on the day after Cassie's suit was filed that Diddy, listen to this, vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. The suit was resolved the following day. At the time, Braffman told CNN in a statement that the decision to settle a lawsuit was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Now listen to this guy in a quote. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Mrs. Ventura the best. Details of the settlement were not disclosed. Since November, however, Combs has faced five other civil lawsuits accusing him of a range of sexual misconduct and other illegal activity. I'm telling you folks, just look this up. You will be astonished. He has denied the allegations and the cases remain active right now to this day. Puff Daddy continued this denial on December 6th of 2023. This past December, he posted a note on Instagram that said this. Enough is enough. Remember this statement on Instagram? Do you guys all remember this? Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I do not, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name my family, and for the truth. <laughs> now, you know how I feel about the truth on this show, okay? Since Sunday the 19th, the comments on Combs' December Instagram posts were turned off. Now, Savage Truth is out. The video can't be denied. Some of the alle alleged abuse is out. And P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puff Diddy, okay, is singing a very different tune. After months, not only of denial, but of smearing his various accusers of being money-grubbing liars, he is admitting that at least one accuser told the truth. Now, you're all thinking like me. You're right. You know right from wrong. We all know right from wrong. And this video makes you wonder, would he have even ever admitted it? If the video didn't exist, if the video didn't expose the behavior, if not, how sorry could he possibly truly be? 
and how many abusers adopt the Combs playbook of denying responsibility and painting accusers with legitimate accusations as greedy opportunists. What's done in the dark, folks, always comes to the light. This video is giving Puff a dose of humility. I'm particularly happy to see again, absolutely happy to see, by the way, that CNN covered this right away, particularly because they tend to protect or diminish or hide cases of crimes by black people. I guess this story falls beneath the Me Too hierarchy. I'm glad Cassie got out and has moved on. She seems to be happy. She's married. She's had a kid since then, and possibly two. When abusers actually abuse, we need to hold them accountable, okay? What a shame for someone so talented, okay? This is a talented man. If you, if you were, I don't know if you're a part of the hip hop scene, if you paid attention, if you were into it in 93, I was, okay? Hip hop music and alternative music was my life. Okay, but he's truly, truly talented. Aside from all of this shameful behavior and the abuse, he really, truly is a talented man. What a shame for someone so talented and had so had such an impact on others, on so many, to choose this kind of behavior. But best wishes to Cassie and any and all others who are abused and suffering. We hope for your escape and we hope for your recovery. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And as always, be bold, be strong, be faithful, be true. Till next time, I'm Cicely. The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis is a production of Front Page Magazine and the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Reproduction of this podcast without express written consent is prohibited.